coloured snowstorm. Ah, uh, these aren't snowflakes. These are the instructions of how our bodies are built. This is a chromosome. Oh, OK. Well, I've heard about those, actually. So where in the body are they found? Think back to the work you did on cells. These are in the nucleus of every cell in our body. That's a lot of chromosomes. So is there just one in every cell? No. In humans, there are 23 pairs in every cell. But all organisms have chromosomes to instruct the organism how to build itself. Right. I think we'll need to take this rather slowly. So do all chromosomes come in pairs? Yes. Unless there's something wrong with them. But we'll come to that later. So why do they always come in pairs then? That's easy. We get one half of a pair from each parent, which allows variation to occur. I'm not sure I'm following this. OK, look, I'm sure this lot will be pretty familiar to most of you. It goes back to the sperm and the egg cell and the moment of fertilisation. Oh, yes. We all know about that. Yes. When the two cells meet, or rather, when the egg is fertilised, the corresponding chromosomes pair off. So chromosome number three in the sperm cell will find chromosome number three in the egg cell. And chromosome number 20 will seek out chromosome number 20 in the other cell. Until all of the chromosomes have found their partners. Oh, I get it. But wait a minute. Surely this means that every sperm cell and every egg cell only has one set of chromosomes. I.e. 23 single chromosomes instead of 23 pairs. Exactly. Reproductive cells, which produce sperm and egg cells, are very special because of this. They are the only cells in our body to have a single set of our 23 chromosomes. And this is so that when the egg is fertilised, we get an equal number of chromosomes from each parent, so that we get the full set of 46 chromosomes, or 23 pairs. For the first time, I think I actually understand it. But why do we have so many chromosomes? Well, we are very complex creatures, you know. Each chromosome contains a number of genes, which are basically chemical instructions for one particular feature. For example, eye colour. Or hair type and colour. Or height. Or limb length, etc. But there are so many options for variation. How does all that work? Basically, some genes are said to be more dominant than others. So, for instance... If one parent was to contribute a brown-eyed gene and the other parent was to contribute a blue-eyed gene, the brown-eyed gene would be dominant over the blue-eyed gene, which is said to be recessive. This means that the child has brown eyes. Well, I see. But why do people have blue eyes, then? Hold on. Is it because that both parents contribute a blue-eye gene. So there's no brown-eye gene present at all? Yeah, you're getting the hang of this now. OK, so when each chromosome finds its partner, the genes match up too. Right. Well, that all seems logical. Good, but there's one more thing you'll need to know. All chromosomes, and therefore genes, are made up of a chemical called DNA. If we look at a chromosome closely, we can see that the DNA is coiled up to form the entire chromosome. So, it's actually DNA, then, that is the basis of all of this? Yeah. DNA has its own language, just like you and I are talking English. But DNA only has four letters. Well, that doesn't sound very complicated. Ah, but it is. Because these letters appear in long strings, and there are millions and millions of different ways that these letters can be organised. And that's why all living things are so different. OK, so let's make sure we've got this straight. Our basic set of instructions on how we should be built and function are contained within a chemical called DNA. A given length of DNA may contain a set of instructions for a particular part of us, say, hair colour. So this is a gene, and lots of genes make up a whole chromosome. Well, that wasn't too hard. But what about the biggest difference between human beings? That of sex. Ah, uh, 
there's a dedicated set of chromosomes for that, and scientists have identified it as set number 23. This pair look completely different to me. That's because they are. These are the sex chromosomes of a male, and we can tell that from these two chromosomes. The one on the left is called an X chromosome and is the one of a pair provided by the mother, whilst the other one is called a Y chromosome and is provided by the father. If the Y chromosome is present alongside the X chromosome, this causes male characteristics to develop. Females, on the other hand, have two X chromosomes, so there's no Y chromosome present at all. But I don't understand. If the father has contributed a chromosome, it's going to be Y. So surely this means that all children will be male, as this chromosome is dominant. I can understand you thinking that. But don't forget that males have one X and one Y chromosome. So the sperm cell may either have an X chromosome or a Y chromosome, so that there's actually a 50-50 chance in any offspring being male or female. Oh, I get it. So just to recap, if an egg is matched with an X chromosome sperm, then the result will be a female child. But if it's matched with a Y chromosome sperm, then the child will be male. Good. I'm glad you've got that, because now we're going to talk about what can happen when things go wrong. Now, how did I know that was coming? Look, if you've got it so far, then this will be a doddle. Obviously, chromosomes are very important structures, but also very delicate structures, which means that they may become damaged or faulty, which leads to mutations. Well, that sounds nasty. But what on earth does it mean? A mutation is basically when a chromosome becomes damaged in some way which usually happens when the chromosome replicates and something goes wrong during this process. This will almost certainly lead to some strange new characteristics. Like... Like having hair all over your body. Or having purple skin. Or like having two heads. Or indeed, having extra limbs, like this poor fly. Oh! Yep, yeah, let's make no bones about it. Nearly all mutations are very bad for the organism. Hmm. So if our DNA and chromosomes are so delicate, surely there are some external factors which could damage them or cause mutations? Right again. There are four major ones which make the chances of mutations much higher if you're exposed to them. And they are? Radiation, UV and sunlight, X-rays and some chemicals. These chemicals that cause mutations are called mutagens, and cigarette smoke contains a lot of them. Oh. But there's another whole category of mutations that cause disease. These are often inherited. What? Passed down from parent to child? Yeah, via defective or damaged genes. Mm, give me an example. OK. Let's take a look at cystic fibrosis. This disease means that the body produces a lot of sticky mucus in the lungs and digestive system. That sounds serious. It is, but the interesting part is how a person gets it. You see, both parents can carry the defective genes, but neither of them will show any symptoms, and so they are said to be carriers. Mm, I'm not sure I'm getting this. OK, look. Remember that a child gets one chromosome from each parent? Uh-huh. Right. So let's say that both of these parents are carriers. This means that each parent has one cystic fibrosis gene, indicated by the small c, and one normal gene, indicated by the capital C. Looking at this table then, we can see the chances of these parents' offspring having the disease or being carriers. Oh, I get it. So the chances are one will be completely normal, two will be carriers, whilst the fourth will develop the disease. Right. But hold on. What if one parent has developed the disease whilst the other is normal? Ah, well that changes things, as you can see. Oh, OK. So all offspring are carriers, because they only have one defective gene. But none will develop the disease. Exactly. Another gold star coming your way. There is another type of inherited disease, and that's when the cell nucleus contains more than 46 chromosomes. More than 23 pairs? Yes. In the genetic disorder called Down syndrome, the child ends up with three chromosome 21s in their cells because the egg that is fertilised has an extra chromosome 21. So the child has 47 chromosomes instead of the usual 46. That's it. It may have an effect on mental ability, 
or it might lead to the child being more susceptible to certain diseases. Wow! It's amazing to think that this tiny spiral, which is in every cell, is responsible for so much. 